Hi everyone, it's Dr. Michael Suzanne Parsons, founder of the Natural Path Health Center and creator of Detox Done Right. I first want to say thank you so much for the overwhelming um, amount of response we've gotten from our first training video series and hopefully you have filled out your questionnaire and you've got your score. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Keep those questions and comments coming because I want to address all of those things that you have in your brain pertaining to your health and toxicity. So let's just take a moment and I just want you to picture waking up in the morning without your alarm going off. You wake up before the alarm and you start your day and you're not feeling gassy and bloated. You're not having urgent get out of my way diarrhea. You are feeling great. The brain is clicking. You have energy to exercise and you feel good after instead of crashing and burning. How cool is that? You're able to get on the floor and play with your kids or your grandkids. You're able to think clearly. You're feeling creative. You feel like you have your life, the life that you've always wanted with energy and joy. Just imagine that. We can get that, but we've got to get you back on track. Now, one of my patients that has gone through my Detox Done Right program, she came to me and I so clearly remember hearing how she was suffering. She was to the point where she could not go outside because it would make her sick. Yet she had to work. She had to make a living. She felt like she was shut in and becoming reclusive because she just felt so bad. Her energy was in the toilet. She was having headaches. She just didn't feel well. Her global sense of well-being was gone. And we started her back on track. And not only did her energy come up, she started to burn fat. That weight that had been clinging to her for so long started to go away. She started to go outside and not crash and burn. That's amazing for her. And now she truly is living a vibrant life because we identified what was going on and we got her the nutrients that she needed to get her system back on track again. Now, I want to talk about a big myth because I get this a lot here in the office. Well, I eat pretty well. I don't really need to detoxify. My food's pretty good. I don't eat organic all the time, but you know, I'm pretty good. Well, let me tell you, my friends, food is just one component. There's a lot of things that go into the detox factory that has to be addressed. And that's what we're going to talk about today. What are those things? Where are we getting all these toxic load things I keep talking about? So going back in time, it wasn't until the late 18th century that the whole field of detoxification started to be studied. Now, you have to understand that detox is not just one little reaction. It's a process involving many, many reactions and lots of little pieces. So it's important that we keep that in mind. It's not as simple as we would like to think. Now, here's some scary things. In the early 21st century, that's when we started to become exposed to increased compounds in our air, our water, and our food. So we are exposed to the wind that blows and the, the water that flows. So whatever happened upstream or up air from us, we're going to be having an experience from that right down to our food and where it's grown and how it's grown, what is done to it after it's grown and processed. So how well we detoxify these things that we're exposed to really determines your overall health. It's not necessarily that we're exposed to it. It's what our body does to those things once we do get exposed. Now, the Environmental Protection Agency in 1994 said that there were 2.2 billion pounds of toxic chemicals released just in the United States. And in 2002, 4.7 billion pounds were then released. That's a lot of toxic exposure that our human bodies have to deal with. And it's now estimated that there's 25% of us who are suffering from heavy metal poisoning. Where are we getting all of this? My gosh! Well, there's five categories of things that we kind of have to address and think about when we're talking about our toxic load. 
So the first thing that we're going to talk about is what we call end products of cellular metabolism. So this is something that happens in our body. Our cells have jobs to do. Some cells are making hormones, some are making muscle, some are making stomach acid, some are making your toenails, hair. Every cell has a function. And within that cell, there are things that are created that has to be eliminated. Plus, there are things that we get from our food through the detoxification digestion process and those things, when we eat that food, anything that the body can no longer utilize, guess where it goes? It's supposed to go into pee, poop, or sweat. Three things, pee, poop, or sweat. If those end items from digestion are no longer utilized, have no more useful purpose, we've got to pee, poop, or sweat them out. Now, if you can't do that because you are out of balance, guess what? Those harmful things that we cannot use anymore, that we can't get out through pee, poop, or sweat because our detox factory is broken, they get stored in our body fat. Our body fat is our storage container for toxins. So these lipophilic or fat-loving substances go easily into our body fat. So we want to make sure that we are able to properly process and eliminate these things. So an example of this is something simple like protein metabolism. The end product of protein digestion is nitrogen. Nitrogen has a very important effect in the body because we're then supposed to convert that nitrogen into ammonia and from ammonia we convert it into urine or pee. If we have missing pieces in that, what's very common is we get this buildup of ammonia and the brain doesn't like it. So if we are missing some of our detox pieces and we get this buildup of ammonia, guess what we get up here? Brain fog. Can't think your way through a simple situation. Can't be creative when you're swimming through the swamp of fog up there all because you've got this ammonia buildup. Brain grumpy, doesn't like it. So these end products of cellular, cellular metabolism are really, really important that we get rid of them through what? Pee, poop, or sweat. Number two, drugs. We've got three categories. Number one, over-the-counter. Over-the-counter things like Tylenol, Ibuprofen, your Benadryl, all of those things those are not natural to the body and they have to be detoxified and eliminated. But if we're missing some of the tools because we're not eating well or we're stressed or a lot of other factors get into that, then they once again get turned into this stuff that gets tucked into our body fat. I don't know why I keep pointing over here. I'm not sure about that, but it gets tucked into our body fat. And for women, we tend to store it right here. It never goes where we want it to go. We can't selectively distribute our toxic fat. But the other thing with drugs is over-the-counter. In addition to that is prescription. A lot of us, not me, because thank goodness I'm on the path to health, but many of you have a lot of prescription medications. I have people who come in with over 20 different medications that they are on and oftentimes it's to manage symptoms from other medications. Why are you on medications? Because your body's out of balance. And those drugs have to be eliminated. They have to be detoxified. We've got to turn them into something that we pee, poop, or sweat, or even breathe out. Another form of burden could be recreational drugs. Cocaine, alcohol, marijuana, whatever that drug of choice is, you still have to process it and eliminate it. So we've got end products of cellular metabolism and we've got medications that we have to detoxify. Another category are chemicals. We don't really think about chemicals that are in our foods. Stabilizers, additives, preservatives, if it's in a box, a bag, or a can, there's a higher likelihood that there's something chemical in there to increase the shelf life, to make it a pretty color, to have it taste better. So those food additives, colorings, dyes, those are things that have to be detoxified. 
But then there's our household things. We've got our air fresheners because you got stinky poo and you're spraying that stuff. The propellants used are not good. The things that you're breathing for those aren't good. We've got cookware. How many of you are using Teflon, nonstick cookware, because you don't want things to stick? Those are toxic. When those things heat up, they off gas and you are eating things that are increasing your estrogen load. And guys, that goes for you too. If you don't want man boobs, quit having your women cook with Teflon. Get them something better. The other thing is skincare products. What we put on our skin. Do you know they put plasticizers in those things? Ew. Just get plastic and rub it on your body. What's the difference? Well, you're absorbing it more in a skincare product. There's other things in there that are very harmful to you. So it's difficult to get organic. You have to look for it. It's not the least expensive thing, but my gosh, if you don't, you're increasing your burden. There's lead in makeup. Yes, lead. That expression, get the lead out. We need to get the lead out because a lot of us have this exposure from lead and if we can't get it out, it gets stored. The other things might be like cleaning items, the detergents, the cleaning materials you're using in your kitchen, spraying of herbicides and pesticides and bug killers around the house. You breathe those in, you walk through the grass, it gets on your shoes, you walk in your home, then you lay on the carpet and play with your animals or your kids and you kiss their little feet because they're so cute and you are getting more and more exposure from those things. Even medical inhalers, the propellants on those are very, very toxic. Spray paint, hairspray, there's a lot of things that increase our chemical exposure. The, even the flame retardants on our, on our furniture, those things are chemicals. The fourth thing is hormones. We make hormones every day, we're supposed to, whether you're a man or a woman, and it's not just about female or male hormones, but all of our hormones that are made have to be detoxified. So we make them, they go to the cells, they make things happen, and then we have to eliminate them once again. That's either gonna be through poop or pee, and if we can't get those things to the state that we need to pee or poop them out, we store them, and these hormones have an active effect on the body. It tells our body to do things. So when these hormones get stored in body fat and your fat is going up and up and up, you're becoming more hormonally reactive. And for a lot of women, this is a big cause of why you're feeling so out of balance. The other thing is if you're not properly getting rid of these hormones and they're kind of in this intermediate zone or what I call the danger zone, then you're actually increasing the probability of having female cancers because those danger zone metabolites are actually more deadly than the original hormone itself. So this connection to hormones and cancer, there's a lot of studies going on on that. How do you know you are in that category? Keep watching because we're gonna educate you on that. But the fifth area that might be adding into your toxicity burden funnel could be what we call bacterial endotoxins. Now these toxins, think of these as bugs in the gut with fangs and they're just tearing you up. These bugs produce literally toxins and then we get symptoms from these toxins. It could be pain, it could be gas, bloating, it could be um, some irritation around the anal area. I know I'm getting really graphic, but that's the way it is. So you can get really out of balance intestinally and these bad bugs not only are gonna make you feel icky, but they also are gonna be eating the food that you are eating. So they're robbing you of those food nutrients. So you feel the need to maybe eat more. Where do you think those binges come from? Ah, aha. So you might be binging to feed a whole ecosystem you weren't even aware of. There's a lot of bugs in there. Some are good. The bad ones are bad though. So between the end products of cellular metabolism, the drugs that you may be taking, the chemicals that we all are exposed to, the hormones that we're all making, and then this balance that we need to hopefully maintain in the gut, we have a lot of potential for toxic accumulation. So, 
What can you do right now? Number one, quit using those spray aerosol cans. Those are not healthy. You're better off using an herbal botanical one that doesn't have all the chemicals in it. And fix your stinky poo, but that's a video for another time. Second, get rid of your Teflon. Get rid of it. Don't give it away. Get rid of it. Throw it away and get something that's going to be safe for you. There's no negotiation when it comes to the Teflon stuff. You've just got to get rid of it. The next thing, you shouldn't be microwaving your food, but I know some of you are. And this is a journey and it's a process. So what you could do immediately, stop microwaving in plastic. Stop. Use glass. Use anything. If you have take-home containers of food and it's that styrofoam, ah, certainly don't microwave that. That's like, just might as well eat the plastic. So get rid of that stuff. Get glass containers. Preferably, I'd like you to heat them up in a non-Teflon type of pan. So those are some things that you can take action on ASAP right now, today. But... I also want you to fill out my xenobiotic tolerability test. This is going to give you an idea of another area of burden that you might need to deal with. So make sure you get rid of your Teflon cookware, you get rid of the plastic stuff you're microwaving things in, and get rid of the microwave too if you can, and then make sure that you fill this out I want to know how you're doing with that. I want to know the action that you're taking. So make sure you post your questions and I will be the one to respond to those personally. So in the meantime, you've got some homework to do. And in our future videos, we're going to dig even deeper about other things that you need to do, not can do, but that you need to do as far as foods and what you need to be putting in your body. So this is Dr. Parson signing off and reminding you that we are going to figure out how to be healthy in a very toxic world. Bye-bye.